and welcome to Halloween. <laughs> Hey, if Paula, Danny, Frank, and Ryan get to dress up, then I get to too, okay? That's right, I'm Mortis Kairos. Let's start by breaking down everything that we know about the new chromatic brawler, Lola. And then we'll cover everything else. Now, I'm not entirely sure if Lola is actually the first brawler of a new Hollywood trio, or if she's the second brawler in Stu's trio, and Stu is also in Hollywood. I mean, Lola's an actress, Stu's a stuntman. I don't know, it would make sense. And honestly, I've been having a really hard time thinking about what Stu's trio would actually belong to. This top hat is too big. <laughs> okay, let's try costume number two. <laughs> From the looks of it, Lola's obsessed with all the glitz, glam, and luxury that comes with being a movie star. Okay, I'm trying my best. That The audio was terrible, okay? Maybe this? Honestly, Lola is probably the only brawler that actually appreciates Colette's obsession with her as a brawler. She even saved Colette's little sticky note saying that she loves her, probably because Lola's just so self-absorbed. In fact, Lola might be so full of herself that it actually created a dark, scary, evil side of her that we can actually see in the reflection of her mirror. Now, after taking a good look at Lola's stats, I actually think she's going to be pretty solid as a, a good damage dealer. She has the 37th highest health in the game at 5,600 total health, which is actually pretty similar to Nita and Poco, which gives you a good idea of how tanky she is. Not the tankiest, but still a lot of HP. Her main attack fires six projectiles that each deal 392 damage, and that comes up to 2,352 damage with just one ammo. That is as much damage as Spike and Surge can deal with one ammo if all of their projectiles hit, which is a lot of damage, right? The projectiles are fired in a pattern kind of similar to Max's attack. It's a narrow cone, which makes it difficult for Lola to deal max damage from a distance. But if you're up close to her and you take all of those ammo into the face, you're gonna regret it because that's a lot of damage. Now she looks like she has a normal movement speed and her reload feast isn't like super fast, but it's also not like really slow. I'll be able to get a more accurate measurement once I actually do my Lola Olympics video. But I think that her reload speed is similar to Terra's and Sandy's, although it might be just a little bit faster. What's really interesting though is Lola's super. When Lola uses her super, she creates a clone of herself that does exactly what she does. If she moves to the left, it moves to the left. If she moves to the right, it moves to the right. If she spins around in a circle, it spins around in a circle and it's like she's teaming with herself. But what's really interesting is that when she attacks, it also attacks in the same direction that she was aiming. Her clone deals the same amount of damage as she does, but it only actually has half of her total health, which is actually a little bit more than Terra's healing shade has. After looking at the footage, it looks like if you actually run her, the mirror image into a wall, you can actually use walls to like reposition it as well. And honestly, this is a really weird ability and I haven't had enough time to determine how strong I think it will actually be. More information in a future video, but it has a lot of unique situations that could be really useful. The mirror could be used to tank some shots for Lola, which I think is like the, the worst way to use it, but it could work. Or I could actually see Lola wanting to place the mirror image behind her so that she would tank for it, and then it would actually be able to hit some damage with her attacks and like spread out her attacks so that it's easier for you to actually hit your shots. Maybe Lola would even want to get the mirror image stuck in in a corner and then she could go into that same corner so that she and the mirror image would be in the same exact spot at all times and then every single attack would deal like double damage, right? That would be really interesting and you wouldn't have to sacrifice any range because, or even, it's like the foolproof way of playing it because you just put it down and then you move with it and it's just more damage and kind of also more HP, unless you're facing somebody like Terra who can pierce through both of you. I'm actually really excited to get my hands on Lola so I can make a sneak peek of her, which you should absolutely subscribe for. Not just because I'm super close to 800,000 subscribers, but because I make, I make pretty okay content. It's worth subscribing for. I mean, my mom's not subscribed but hopefully you guys are. Now, I'm actually pretty sure that I found out what Lola's first star power does, but first, it's time to put on the official Star Park character mask. Fits on most human faces. So much fun, you'll never want to take it off. Okay, I don't know if this is any better than the Mandalorian mask, but I guess we'll... <laughs> Ah, it's creepy! You'll notice that Lolo's ammo bar actually turns yellow when she has just one ammo left. And the projectiles that are fired from that shot actually deal 509 damage each. And that's about a 30% damage boost. And it's interesting because it means that 
conserving your ammo is actually a bad idea with Lola when you have this star power equipped. That actually increases the total damage from one ammo to 3,054, which is a little less than B's supercharged shot. And it's actually more damage than what Colt can do with one ammo, having all six projectiles hitting you in the face. Only five brawlers in the game have the potential to deal more damage with one ammo of their attack, which actually makes Lola a big threat when it comes to damage she can unload with this star power equipped. I like to point out that her clone does not seem to receive the damage boost from this ability, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, I cannot figure out what my Halloween costume is going to be. Maybe I should be Kairos Tim. Hello, fellow brawlers. I'm the fake Kairos, Kairos Tim. I think I'm going to give up here. Now, we don't know what her second star power or her gadget will be, but I think that a cool gadget would be her, like, replenishing her clone's health, like Bull's T-Bone Injector, except that it wouldn't be for herself. It would just be for the clone, so, like, I don't know. Or maybe, like, a shield for the clone or something like that. Maybe she could act it and it would detonate her clone in a huge blast it would deal some damage kind of like penny's pocket detonator and while i'm just brainstorming gadgets here another idea would be lola actually switching places with her clone which would be a whole other level of kind of cool and interesting for her second star power lola's clone could receive a shield for a short period after spawning so it doesn't immediately get eliminated after being spawned or maybe an ability that actually lets her clone sap hp from enemies that are close to it so it like she deals damage and life steals it from them That'd be interesting. Either way, I think it's a safe bet that Lola's second star power and her gadget will have something to do with her clone because it is a very unique mechanic and I mean, we don't have anything like it in the game. For those of you guys that really love pins, here are actually Lola's pins and all of these will be unlockable in the next Brawl Pass. Now let me reveal all the other details that I've figured out from Brawl Talk starting with the new skins. Chola Lola is Lola's skin that you will actually get in the Brawl Pass once you have reached tier 70. Based off of a quick Google search because I don't know what a Chola is so you guys can roast me in the comment section if like everybody's supposed to know what that is but it's based off of the latin american chola which is kind of like gangy kind of thing but her fox scarf has changed into a rocket launcher a sci-fi rocket launcher that's what i'm going with okay next we have b800 skin for bull and you'll actually receive that at tier one of the brawl pass really interesting it's bull's regular skin except that now he's a cyborg and part of his actual skin is ripped off which makes me think that he's not the only cyborg in brawl stars surge kong is Surge, but he's in a King Kong costume and throws rocks instead of energy drink. I don't know what the skins are going to cost yet, so I'm going to guess that this is either going to be 80 or 150 gems. Then we have Captain Crow, who is just regular Crow, but he's decided to become a captain in some sort of a movie. I think he's probably going to cost 80 gems, maybe 150 gems. We also have Squeak Buster Gale, who I think is going to cost 150 gems, and this skin is so cool. I don't understand why Gale gets so many awesome skins, but this is just like really awesome. Then the last skin from Brawlywood is the head of production, Director Buzz. If I had to guess, I'd say that this skin will probably be 80 gems. But that's not all. We're also getting four new Brawloween skins, which will be limited edition. You will only be able to buy them during this time. Starting off with Swamp Jean, who we've actually kind of known about for like two years now. In this Brawloween animation, you actually see a creepy glowing swamp creature underneath the dock at this scene. Nobody actually knew that it was Gene at the time, so a lot of content creators, including myself, speculated that it would be a new brawler, and, like, I came up with this concept for Gil. Turns out it was just a Gene skin that Supercell decided to wait two whole years before completing and releasing, and this, I mean, this is a cool skin. I like it. I like the story behind it. It could either be 80 or 150 gems. Next, we have Ghost Squeak, which I think is going to cost 150 gems. This skin is so cool. I love all the ghostly blom attacks. It, it's really awesome. Third is the Headless Rider Stu, who has some cool, like, green flame trail from his super. That looks, looks awesome. I could also see this being 150 gems, maybe 80 gems if we're lucky. And then the last Brawloween skin is Count Pangula. If I had to guess, I would guess that this is going to be 50, maybe 80 gems. I also think there's a pretty good chance we'll be seeing some of the Brawloween skins from the past. Now, Witch Shelly came out two years ago, Werewolf Leon came out two years ago, and Piper Calavera came out two years ago. And my guess is that all three of these might actually not be available any longer after this Brawloween season. So get them while you can. Other Brawloween skins include Zombie Underworld Bow, and obviously Brawloween Rosa. That's a lot of skins, but 
we actually still have one more to talk about, excluding all of the true gold skins coming in this update. And that's Cat Burglar Jesse, who you'll actually be able to get for free by watching the Brawl Stars World Championship. They're gonna have some weird way for you to be able to watch and actually earn points for watching the championship. And you'll it looks like you'll actually be able to like earn more points for casting your vote on the teams before they play against each other. And if you actually guess correctly, then you'll get more points. I've really been looking forward to the championship, so I cannot wait to see this in action. And if you actually miss the championship or don't earn enough points to unlock the skin, I think that you'll be able to purchase the skin later for probably 150 gems. Also, Jesse's getting a remodel, which is like awesome, but there's actually a part of me that's kind of sad. I'm going to miss old Jesse. She's she's been one of my favorites for so long. And, you know, it's this is just it's new. It's new. I don't know. It's not like when Mortis got an update and everybody rioted because he didn't have a hat anymore. She's pretty cool, even with her update. But old Jesse's going to be sad to miss. Now, next, we have a Brawloween special mode that will make all brawlers invisible for 10 seconds every 10 seconds. This special event will actually rotate between all of the game modes. So you'll play Hot Zone like this, but everybody's invisible. Or you'll play Siege and everybody's invisible and like Gem Grab and everybody's invisible every 10 seconds. Like this is going to be really interesting. I'm actually really excited to try this out. However, based off of Brawl Talk, it looks like it's replacing Showdown Plus. And since they didn't mention anything about Showdown Plus becoming permanent, my guess is it's about to go away and I'm really going to miss that because that's one of my favorite game modes and I hope it comes back someday. Now, also coming in this update is the new Brawlywood environment. This environment is actually really unique in comparison to all the environments. Most environments specifically belong to a certain trio. The junkyard clearly belongs to Pam, Nani, and Jesse. The graveyard environment clearly belongs to Frank, Mortis, and Ems. You have Terra's Bazaar, which belongs to Terra and Jean and Sandy. But the Brawlywood environment actually shows different sets for each of the Brawlywood skins ends not necessarily the brawlers okay obviously we do have lola's trailer trailer here but then we have director buzz's chair here there's the shop where crow bought his captain costume here or at least the wardrobe change where he got it from and then the surge kong area over here covered in bananas there's even a swampy area for swamp gene here and so i'm not entirely sure what the lore is behind this new environment but i'm excited to do a little bit of investigating and see what supercell is actually doing for this place just to be clear though i didn't see the whole environment but i also did not see anything that suggests that Stu is from this environment. I still really feel like Stu and Lola make sense in a, a combo together. Stu could be like the crash test dummy for the actual sets, whereas Lola is an actual actor. I don't know. Interesting. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that they said that changes on clubs or that information would be shown to us throughout the month of November. Ah, <sighs> man, that tells me we probably won't be getting this update that they have I've been waiting for for so long until probably the end of November, maybe even Oh, early December. It's been a while since we've had a major change come to Brawl Stars. Like, it's been months, right? We've got new Brawl Passes, we've got new Brawlers, we've got new skins, but an actual change to the game? I really can't wait to see what's coming. But, you know, even though it's only been a month since the last update, we're actually getting a fair amount of content for this update, okay? We, we got a new Brawler, tons of skins, and a new Brawl Pass, and then like, you know, a, a game mode that's actually kind of like a reskin of the current game modes. But for just one month, and also them telling us we're gonna get another update next month, that's pretty solid. And I'm going to be doing some sneak peeks for this update with including a complete breakdown on Lola and everything you need to know about her and exactly how her mirror mechanic works. So make sure you subscribe. I'm also planning on sharing my 100% honest thoughts on this update in a future video as well. So make sure you guys subscribe on that because I do actually have a lot of thoughts about it, even though I just said that it's a lot and it were, you know, it's pretty good. But anyway, I'll, more thoughts later. Okay. Now this video is finished. If you have not subscribed and hit this button right here, you can go watch some more videos right there, including, well, whatever this one is <laughs> for now this is Kairos time ticking by we will see you in Brawl Stars <laughs>